Hello everyone, welcome aboard. Uh, we are at an undisclosed location today and we have a 43 foot 1988 post sport fishing boat to show you. So let's go jump in and check it out. So this is the boat. Please ignore the construction noise from across the bay. It's something we're just gonna have to deal with today. Uh, the first thing you'll notice when you come up to the post is the Carolina flared bow and the tender on the front as well. Um, those are just earmarks of a classic sport fishing yacht as well as having no lower helm. That's very common as well. And the large outriggers off the back that go off of the flybridge. Then you get to the stern and you have a big open space for fishing. As you step onto the stern, you'll see a swim ladder down here below the swim step, and then a entryway through here. The way this operates is it flips up on a hinge down here, and then the door releases forward. So I myself am not a fisherman, but something that is important to fishermen is having a ton of empty deck space in the stern of the vessel for fishing. Um, that's why all of these rails have this cushion along the side of it so that you can lean on it to use it as leverage while you're fishing. A lot of them also have fighting chairs back here. This one does not have a fighting chair because it's not mainly used for fishing anymore. There are these two chairs here though. As we're back here, we can look into some of these compartments. In this one, you have a live well, which is now used as storage. On this side, there is a ladder to go up to the flybridge. Some raw and freshwater hose systems down here. And then on this side, a sink and stern throttle controls, gear and throttles. Above, there is a awning that also flips out to extend and make it longer. On the stern back here, there are two auxiliary speakers to play music from inside the boat. Um, a big sliding door to give you entrance in and out of the salon. Some storage down here. Looks like an excellent place to hide all your fishing lures in these drawers here currently being used for tools, but a very cool old cabinet made out of teak that you can put all your fishing lures in. It's a lot of fun. Once you enter the salon, you'll notice this is where there's no internal controls. Everything is done from the flybridge above with the Isinglass surrounding it. Um, your lights are all down here. Turn everything on and off. Uh, your main power is here on the wall, which is convenient, so you can flip it on right when you enter the boat. This is pretty neat. There is an auxiliary VHF radio for inside the salon down here, so you can talk to anyone without going all the way up onto the flybridge. All the lights are hanging in the corners. On this side of the boat, on the port side, there's a couch down here below, and above there are rod holders that go all the way across, and along the center of the boat, there's a handrail to hold on to as you walk forward. As you come to the front, you'll see a television. Above here, an infotainment system. On the side, a printer and a bell, I guess. Didn't know we had a printer. Um, I don't know what's under here. I don't think there's anything under here. Oh, this is the liquor cabinet. Your little wet bar on the side with all your booze. A couple places to hide some books. On the starboard side, two chairs and a table. Um, the table folds up and becomes bigger. There is a little ice maker down here, just right off the door, which is kind of nice. In case you need to make, grab some ice for outside. I have absolutely no idea what a Franklin, oh, odor shield. Gotcha, Never mind. Uh, more lamps for reading, curtains, more cabinetry up here on this side, a uh, vent for the AC, another vent down here for the AC, and it has a cruise air system. I believe it has two. Some more cabinets and storage space all along here. As you go down the vessel, we have a galley. Not a kitchen, but a galley. Stove top, four burner, three burner, and an oven. Vent up top, microwave over here, more storage and cabinet space. And this side has your control panel. Um, it's pretty much like a modern control panel. It's got your shore and generator that you can flip or slide over. Uh, let me get you your light here. I bought a light and then I lost it. AC, amps, holding tank cage, everything that a modern boat would have. More cabinet space, storage, trash under there. 
sink, oven, refrigerator, empty refrigerator, that's disappointing. There we go. Behind me is the bunk room. These are two twins, one on top, one on bottom, currently being used for storage. Um, they all have reading lights on them. There's more cabinet space back here behind this door. This door leads to the only head on the vessel. Sink, shower, more space. Uh, there's a nice hatch here in the head. And then that door on the one side of the head leads to the V-Birth cabin up here. Pretty large bed, pretty large cabin. Same lights again in the corners there, as well as reading lights down below. Another hatch to get to the top up there. This door is the door that leads you back into the head, so it's a shared head for the whole boat. And some closet space, cabinetry on both sides, fire extinguisher, as well as along the tops there. Now, as we head back outside, we can enter the flybridge. So you go up this ladder here, which I'm able to do one-handed. It's not that difficult. And you're on the flybridge. The flybridge is fun. It's a good spot. It's where you have to hang out to drive this boat. Uh, you can hear that it actually echoes in here because I have all of these Isinglass enclosures closed. This is completely weatherproof, so you won't get any wind or rain up in here. It's also where you put your outriggers out from. I, uh, I'm not a fisherman, so I don't have a lot of use of these outriggers, but essentially how they work is they are mounted on this pin right here. You can see it right about there. And then they're mounted there, and that's what holds them up. And then what you do is you use this line here, you pull that pin out, and then you use this line that's just hanging out to slowly release them. And then they extend the length of this folded piece here. And then what outriggers do, for those of you that don't know, you have another system on them. There's a small line, you can see, that runs from the very tip of the outrigger. Right there, you can barely see it. It's like right there down to the bottom and what that does is it keeps lures away from the wake of the boat off the ends of the boat works to keep them like kind of on the surface when you're trawling and going around other things to notice in this flybridge seating all the way around and in the front so you actually hang out up here with a lot of people which is fun all of the electronics are overhead and it has what appears to be pretty original furuno equipment i'm sure it's a little newer than the boat but Probably not much newer. I would imagine this one's newer. More on this side. And then under this cover down here, you have the helm and another Furuno unit, as well as some safety equipment. In this case here, little handheld GPS, flares, another horn, everything you need to be safe down there. Port and starboard trim tabs there, anchor control there. You have your gears on this side and your throttle on this side. Simrad autopilot, all of your ignition and controls down here, and then all of your dials up top here, as well as a depth sounder and a searchlight in the corner. It's kind of fun. The compass is all the way up there, which is unique. Um, there's also a nice stainless spotlight up there as well. And from here, you can see everything really great. And you can see the compass, which is cool. It's fun that it's not right on top of the electronics. I think that's why they did that, because by moving the compass away, you don't have much interference with all the electronics and the magnetism going through it. And then as we head down, we'll go check out the bow, and you can kind of see it better, but this is where the awning folds on top of itself. Let's move up this side of the boat to try and avoid some of the noise from the construction. So there's no railing here, as you can see, so you have to be careful and hold on to the this side as you walk up. Up here it's kind of nice, there's a little seat bench area, and then it holds a 12 foot Novarania tender up here. As we head up to the bow, there is a windlass with chain and a bow sprit. Um, the controls for the windlass are down here, and we have some fair leads with some cleats back here. Pretty simple stuff. And then on this side is the uh, crane or the davit, depending on what you like to call it. I call it the crane. Crane just lifts up, hooks on, to a bridle on the tender and you swing it out over and drop it down. So with the bow done, that pretty much covers the interior and exterior of the post sport fishing vessel. Only thing left to do is the dreaded Christian test. Um, for those of you who don't know what the Christian test is, I have a boat partner who I have convinced to shove himself into our engine compartment every single time something breaks. So what I do for these reviews is I make it my turn to try to shove myself into an engine compartment and see how much space there is down there. So let's jump into this engine compartment. I am actually standing on top of it. So we gotta pull this up to get down in there. And then hopefully I don't hurt myself and it's not that hard to 
you know, cram yourself behind these engines, but we're gonna figure it out. All right, so this rug comes up and then you can actually get, you can lift all of these up to get access to the engines, which when you work on it, you have to do, but to do that, you have to move the couch. But when you just need temporary access, you can only lift up the middle. And let's jump down there and see how it is. The first thing you'll notice when we get in here is the generator is right in the front, which is awesome because when you need to use it or check on it or do anything with the generator, like when you're shutting it down overnight, you can actually only open this one and just reach in and fire it up. There's also controls up there at the helm to fire it up too, but it's an Onan Marine Gen Set. Almost 7,000 hours on it. Could have ticked over twice, who knows? Because it only goes to 10,000 hours. If you can hear that noise in here, the buzzing noise, that's the inverter and the charger going. It's kind of always on, nonstop. It's over here, you can see it over there. Other things we got going in here, air compressor over there for the plumbing and the heads. Fireboy system, fire extinguisher system, which is cool. You can ignite that to put out any sort of engine fires. Your cruise air AC units are over here. Uh, very small AC units. Hot water heater over there in that corner. There's a lot less light behind me, as you can see, but we'll flip around and do that in a minute. I actually bought a light after my last boat that I did that was too dark, and I already lost it. Didn't even get to use it. It's already lost. So hopefully I'll be able to find it again because it was a good light, but we'll see. To answer the big question, these are Detroit 692s. Twins, two of them. These Detroits put out about 550 horsepower each. They will bring this vessel up to a 20 knot cruising speed and at full will go, it'll almost get to 30 miles an hour or 30 knots not miles an hour, we're boaters, 30 knots. I'm actually sitting on top of the fuel tank, in case you were curious. It's right in the dead center of the boat. And I know because there's fuel tank valves coming out of it. Behind us are batteries, and these engines are straight shafted through into the water. No sort of fancy drive system or anything, just the transmission straight shaft right out. There's nothing really back here besides the engine through holes, which are in a kind of difficult spot to get to, which is sort of annoying. That's pretty much it. There's some bonding system equipment back there, but it's mainly just the through holes. Okay, so I now have to find a way to get behind these engines, and I'm not gonna be able to film it because these are, these are in the way. I don't know if you can see, but if you look, there's like one finger worth of distance between the top of this and the engine. So there's no way I'd be able to film myself hiding behind it. So I'm gonna have to bring you with me, which means that I'm just gonna go, try to go through this way. I think you could maybe, there's no shot. I mean, if unless you dove, you wouldn't be able to do it to get through these holes, but you might be able to. So let's try to get through this way. Let's start on the port side and let's see how this goes. I have my lav mic on still, so hopefully it doesn't get caught on anything. There's another battery over here for the generator, it looks like. It sounds like the engine block heater is on. There's also another battery back here. Okay, so I pretty much made it all the way back, which is not super hard to get to the front of the engine here. There's nowhere to work or do anything on this side, and I can't really stay here, so I'm gonna have to get out. But port side, I give like, it's not really hard to get where I am, but it gets like a three on the pain in the ass scale because the pain in it gets like a, th I would give this like a three on the pain and inconvenience scale only because even though you can kind of get back here easy enough, like there's no way you're doing any work on this side. I'm guessing the other side's the same. The outboard side of the engines are just, there's no shot. The first thing I can notice immediately looking at this is I just sat there. There's nowhere for me to sit here. So I'm gonna have to stand and crouch in this very small space just to try to look onto the other side. And I got that charger in my ear. But you can see how small it is. I mean, I'm kind of tall, but I'm on my knees right now and I'm this much out of the engine room. This is not a big space for anybody by any means. Um, oh wow, this side actually looks like there's a lot more space in it. Okay, now I'm a little motivated to do this. I'm gonna be careful with the fuel filter. Fuel lines over here. I know it's dark, I'll try to fix it in a second. Okay. Ow. Okay. 
I just lost my mic, but I'm on the complete outboard side of the engine over here. I mean, I did it. It's not easy to get to, but it's not all that painful for being honest. You can kind of work on stuff back here. Let me try to turn the camera around so you can see where I am, but I know it's dark. That is the rear corner of the vessel. This is an after cooler or something I'm leaning on. Really wish I didn't lose my light. It's the outboard side of the starboard engine. And you can actually get back there, which is sick. On the other side, there's a battery right here. So there's like really no way to get back there. But on this side, you can. The only problem is, is there's like way less space to get through. So this side, you can get back, but it's way more of a pain in the ass. I give this side like a two. I don't remember what I got the other side, a three. It's like it's a two. The only reason it doesn't get a one is because there's actually space here for you to crawl into work. If there wasn't space here, it'd be a one. The uh, Christian test is over, thank God. But this boat, the Sunseeker wasn't very easy. This boat definitely has more room to work on the engine than the Sunseeker. But I think the Sunseeker was easier to get around to the points where you couldn't get around anymore. This one you can actually get all the way around if you really need to, which is good, it's what you want, but it's not easy. All right, so that covers the walkthrough section of this 1988 Post 43 sport fishing boat. Now let's go through the stars for this vessel. Stars are out of five, one to five stars, total of 50 stars, so 10 categories. And let's get into it. For category number one, practicality, this boat has everything you need in a vessel its size. Tons of space, forward, below, on the stern. It comes with all the technology you need, full head system, shower. So for that reason, I give Practicality four stars. For styling, it is a sport fishing boat. Sport fishing boats are badass, so it gets four stars. For handling, the Carolina Bow I showed you guys on the front cuts through the water really well and big swell. It is a little moderately tough to dock, mainly because it doesn't have a bow thruster. Um, if it had a bow thruster, it would get more stars, but I'm gonna take one off um, for not having a thruster, so it's gonna get three stars for handling. For performance, it has those twin Detroit Diesel 692s that are straight shafted right out the back. They make 550 horsepower each. That gives the boat a cruising speed of about 20 knots, and it'll top out about 30 knots. For performance, I give it four stars. If efficiency was a category, which it's not, it would get a little less then uh, four stars. For comfort, I don't know how to put this into words, but this boat, even though it is now like almost 40 years old, 35 years old, it feels like a boat. Um, what I mean by that is for those people who have owned a boat before, when you're on the boat, it has this sort of like comfort and coziness and you feel like you're in a cabin. It's always warm, but like all the materials are just like boat materials and uh, and for that reason, I give it four stars. The technology on this boat, while everything does work and it was built in a time when it was when everything was made to work really well, stuff like the chart plotter, even though it still operates after, you know, 25 years, that's awesome. It's old. So technology in this boat, I'm gonna give two stars. But it does do everything you need. I mean, we have a satellite TV right here. It's got a satellite dome on the roof. It's got, you know, surround sound speakers. Maybe we'll change it to three stars. Give it three. Value, this boat is a great value. It's affordable for, I'm not gonna say most Americans, but it is affordable in terms of boats. What I mean by that is you can get this 43 foot boat that you can live on and cruise the whole coast on for something like around $200,000, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, depends on the model. So I think it's a great value in terms of boats go. Party boat. This boat has a good sound system. The layout is great for partying. There isn't a ton of room up on the flybridge for everyone to be hanging out, but there's a ton of room on the stern. There's the cover that goes over the stern. It's an excellent platform to swim off of and, and play off of. So I give Party Boat four stars. Uh, repairability, everything that isn't the engines is really easy to repair on this boat. It's easy to get parts for. There's a bunch of generic parts for this boat. This boat was built with simple generic switches, components, things that you can find to this day. The only thing is with the Detroits is they're getting pretty difficult to service now. Outside of that, they're great engines, but difficult to get serviced onto. So repairability, I'm gonna give three stars, mainly only because of the Detroits. Fun factor, this boat is a great layout, it's awesome. The flybridge that you can drive from, hang out on, the ice and glass, so you can stay up there no matter the weather. The giant platform on the back for swimming. The bow, when that tender is off, is just a giant sun platform to lay out on. This boat's great. All sport fishers have these same characteristics, which makes all of them awesome and one of my favorite types of boats. But for this reason, I give the fun factor of not only this boat, but sport fishers in general, 
four stars. So that completes the stars for this boat. The post 43 sport fishing boat got a total of 37 stars. To be honest with you, I think that the way it was broken up into categories, this boat is actually a lot better than its ranking with the star category. I know that doesn't make sense because I'm the one that makes it up and it's totally arbitrary off what I think. I would put it up there with all the other boats I've done. I believe a couple stars less than like the average of boats I have right now, which is like 39. But in terms of enjoying a weekend on the water, there's no better platform than a sport fishing boat. And this boat meets all the criteria of a sport fishing boat. It's comfortable, it's age, doesn't really matter at all. And it's an awesome boat to hang out on. I actually hang out on this boat all the time in the summer and I couldn't recommend it more. So for that reason, I don't even agree with my own star total but 37 stars. Be sure to check out thecaptainsreview.com. We got all this great merchandise, super weatherproof, cotton, comfortable, boys, girls, logs, we got it all. So check that out, that's thecaptainsreview.com. Your support on that website is what helps me make these videos for everybody. So thank you, smooth sailing, have a great day.